All right, this is Dan from BodybuilderInThailand.com here talking about the value of low rep heavyweight squats, deep squats to be particular. Uh, this is an exercise that is going to produce legitimate real world power. So if you're looking for your strength to not just be existing in the gym or in the weight room, this would be the most important exercise, okay? The reason for this is because when you do a deep squat under control, that way it's either going to crush you or you're going to stand back up or you're going to drop it off your back, okay? And doing that, it the legs are the muscles in your body that produce like the real world power, okay? If you have a big upper body, yeah, it can help you somewhat like in sports and stuff. But the real area like where if you're playing a contact sport where you're going to be adding like crushing power that you can apply directly to your sport is going to be through power and size and the torso and the legs. And so the squat does this both. It builds very thick abdominal muscles and it builds very thick and powerful lower body muscles. Okay. One of the things that used to bother me when I wasn't as strong in the squat, the deep squat in particular, was that it would bother me that I couldn't have like two women on my shoulders and be able to like, or even on my back, you know, maybe if they weren't on my shoulders, but they were like piggybacking on me, I would be under like utmost strain or maybe even couldn't like do like full deep squats with them on my back. And I was like, what the hell? Like, the, you know, yeah, that's 300 pounds though, you know? Um, and you know, most, most women are, you know, in America are around like 130, 140 pounds or so. So, you know, it's around 300 pounds and it's, you know, not as uh, consolidated or to lift as it would be if, if the weight was on a barbell. So, you know, it's a little bit harder. But, you know, you want to be able to do that, thinking of, like, you know, I'm a bodybuilder, you know, you know, I spend a lot of time in the gym, I'm strong. You want to be able to get out into the real world and do things like that, like putting multiple people on your back and being able to deep squat them. Um, you want to be able to, to translate that strength and power from the gym into the real world. And this would be where deep squats, uh, heavyweight, low reps are going to translate massively. And they're going to translate much more than something like a deadlift, for example, because with a deadlift, it does produce strength and power, but there's a lot that has to do like with your frame. You know, deadlifting is really good for adding muscle to the body because it stresses so many muscles all the way from, you know, the head to the toes, but it doesn't produce quite as much power as does something like a squat because of the fact that you're able to use like more leverages and you're picking something off of the floor rather than just having something on top of you crushing you it makes a difference all right so with the squat it's also going to be building the muscles of your entire body so when you are under the squat you're building your spinal erector muscles which are the same, you know, the, the bar is up here, you know, sitting on your traps. One of the ways that I have grown my traps actually has been through squatting because when I'm in a squat set and, you know, maybe I'm, you know, doing, let's say doing 10 reps with 365, okay? Well, that's going to require me to have that 365 sitting on my traps for about 60 seconds, which is quite a long time for my traps to be supporting, um, you know, a fairly large weight like that. Um, and that absolutely has contributed to the development of my traps. Um, a lot of people ask me, because I have relatively large traps, they ask me, you know, what, do you do shrugs, whatever? Um, no, I don't do any shrugs ever. What has built my traps up has been squats, deadlifts, and barbell rows. That's what I do for my traps. I don't ever do shrugs, ever. So the very fact that there's time under tension during the heavy barbell squat 
a lot of time under tension because that bar is sitting on those traps and those traps are supporting that weight for a long time. It does build your traps. Okay, power lifters, for example, too, that prioritize you know this exercise all have big traps. There's no exceptions. So that would be one. All right, and then the other thing though is the spinal erectors because since that bar is up here and you're squatting down, you know, bending over. Those muscles that run up on down either side of your spine, they're like pillars running up and down either side of your spine, are stopping your spine from, you know, flexing forwards like this, you know, like, like that. You know, say this is your head, here's your, your spine, you know, come down in the squat, and now these spinal erectors right here, this is your head, this is your spine, this is your hips, these spinal erectors right here, this is where the bar is sitting, you know, near your head. And they're having to keep your back straight, and if it didn't keep it straight, it would crush like this and you would fall forward. So there's an enormous strain on those spinal erector muscles, the pillars that go up and down your back, which contributes to back thickness. Those are the primary muscles that contribute to back thickness. Um, so, if, you know, the lats, they do do the width of the back, you know, but doing those heavy exercises, squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, you know, and doing them frequently throughout the week because those spinal erectors are meant to be major load carriers and they're static load carriers. You don't need to be flexing them. You know, they don't need to be going, they just need to have loads that sit on them for long periods of time. So it's exercises like barbell rows, squats, and deadlifts are ideal for building up the size of them, and that's going to be, that's why doing the deep heavy squat is going to be one of the main things that gives you a dense thick back. And honestly, it's really cool too because a dense thick back is one of the most powerful looking parts of your physique. So, back thickness is extremely underrated uh, component of deep heavy squats. Also, real-world strength, there is absolutely nothing that compares to deep, heavy squats. Because once you are squatting down with 400 pounds, and you're squatting down into a deep squat position with your legs below parallel, and you're able to stand back up with that, that is some serious power, okay? And you can apply that to the real world all the time. Uh, that is directly applicable to real world, out of the gym, out of the weight room strength, being able to support enormous loads, bend over with them, um, and support them with your body and then stand up, okay? And then as far as the development of the body, also the core. Um, personally, I've never been a fan of the really small, tiny waist physiques. I really think that it's a feminine, non-masculine thing to be doing and to really be worrying a lot about. You know, I've heard other guys say things like, I don't want to do calf raises because it will make it so I can't wear skinny jeans. Or like, say, they'll say emotionally though, like, I don't do calf raises, man. No, no I don't wear my calves so I can't wear my skinny jeans. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, you know, like how, uh, how just butterfly that sounds like do not think <laughs> okay so people that think like that are not people who think like me all right and so other things like wearing like i know that people like bodybuilding competitions and stuff you know those waist trainers do help them but whatever those kinds of things like avoiding training the muscles of the core avoiding uh building up a thick core it just is, it's really uh, feminine and uh, just completely against the whole reason why I stepped into the weight room in the first place was because I wanted to build a big, powerful, muscular, masculine physique. So deep, heavy squats are going to be building. They're, they're a main exercise and possibly the best for building that strong, masculine, thick physique, okay? And core strength is going to be one of the top things that contribute to that, okay? And so, if you want a little 
tiny waist or whatever, that's cool, but you're not going to look as uh, strong and robust and, you know, muscular and powerful as if you had a thicker waist, okay? And so I do not shy away from doing heavy movements. Now, I'm not necessarily trying to build a huge thick waist, right? But if that comes as a byproduct, as from obtaining strength and power through heavy movements like squatting and deadlifting, etc., awesome. I'm not trying to avoid that at all, okay? Because of what my goal was when I first went into the gym was to build that strong, powerful, thick, masculine physique, okay? So you should consider this when you're thinking about your bodybuilding goals, is that, you know, what do you want, you know? You know, are you, don't, don't be doing anything, you know, real feminine like that. Like saying, you know, I can't work a certain exercise or muscle group because I need to be fitting into my skinny jeans, man. That is just gay. Okay? Uh, yeah. So there is massive uh, benefit to doing deep, heavy, free weight squats. And yeah, you build a thick, powerful core and torso. And I like that. All right, this has been Dan from Bodybuilder in Thailand.